turned to the other gods and every time it was a it was a repetitive motion like that they would get blessed they would get they would get cursed they would get rescued they would get blessed they would get blessed, and it was just a cycle and and it kept happening and all through that all through that history god kept sending them prophets and angels and other you know guides and then at one time in first samuel chapter 8 the israelites actually came to the part where they were most arrogant and just re rebuke god they didn't want him as their king they were requesting an earthly king and god said okay i'll give you this earthly king but this earthly king is going to cause you to make is going to make widows of you it's going to take your sons and they'll be killed in war and uh, your daughters will be you know all these kinds of things would happen to you because these kings these earthly kings this man king that you're looking for is not like me and god became very upset with them as you might imagine because he wanted the israelites he wanted those chosen people for himself to worship him and then he he gave them what they wanted you read it read it in first samuel 8 it's an amazing um uh depiction really of what has been happening with our people with all the people of christ throughout four thousand five thousand years this same repetitive thing god would choose them they would get blessed they'd get blessed they'd be worshiping him for a while then they would turn from him they would receive punishment they would be enslaved they would be captured and and, and you know tor may in many cases tortured and then and then god would come and rescue them again and then they would they would say oh lord we're going to do everything that you want us to do lord we're going to worship you and then and then they'd go for a while and they'd be okay and who does this sound like this is, sounds like exactly like us today we do the same thing we get in a, a dire situation and we're calling out to the lord we call out to the lord we call out to the lord and he blesses us and we make all kind of promises lord if you bless me i i will worship you and i won't do that anymore and i you know we go through that same that same pattern blessing we walk away from god we get we get punished we get cursed and then we we want to say oh no god god doesn't punish And we go through that pattern over and over and over and it seemed like we would get tired it seemed like we would get tired of that and then the word says that he would send a strong delusion that's sort of what he did in first samuel 8 he sent a strong delusion because they demanded for a, a king a, a man a human and he gave it to him and so all of this is i want you to think about this because when we talk about who is the enemy sometimes the enemy is in inner me inside you inside me right because we're fighting against that against that spirit and that flesh like we talked about when we were talking about cognitive dissonance so that's one enemy and i ask you to think about uh remembering that you are a temple you're a temple where god wants to dwell and we talked about briefly in matthew 24 and in daniel how the the desolation of the temple is going to take place and that will be just before the tribulation period when Satan literally sets himself up in the temple, the temple that the Israelites are now wanting to rebuild, when he sets himself in, in that temple and he desolates it or desecrates it, I like to call it, because he makes an abomination of the temple by, first of all, eradicating the sacrifices and going back on his promise, his promise of peace and security and safety. He goes back on that promise and then he puts an end to that sacrificing well if you think of that as sort of a metaphor we are god's temple 
he seeks to dwell in us. Now, if something comes along, something that we allow, right, comes along and replaces him, or we make the temple desolate, desecrated, become an abomination, why are some some sins in the Bible referred to as an abomination? Right? Because we're desolating, we're desecrating the temple of God, which our bodies are. Our bodies are the temple of God. After we have received him and believe him as our Savior and Lord. So if our bodies are the temple and we're steady putting things into our temple, and I mean the taking in things with your eyes, taking in things with your ears, taking in things in your with your mouth, or even out of the heart, the mouth speaks, right? So all that stuff that you've been taking in now comes out. And if you're not putting good things in, then only un, un, <laughs> ungood, <laughs> distasteful things will come out, right? So, so if we think of ourselves as the temple and we look to the, uh, the setting up of Satan, the Antichrist, in the physical temple. As a metaphor, I asked the question last week, are you allowing Satan to set up temple, to sit in your temple? Have you taken in so much stuff that is unlike God, that you have actually replaced God with the Antichrist in This temple, this temple, the body. And so then, when we look at 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, we will begin to see what are the characteristics of the Antichrist. We talked about the uh, gifts of the Spirit. We talked about walking in the spirit and what the characteristics were of walking or are of walking in the spirit. So now we're going to examine who and what the Antichrist is and what his um, characteristics are. Because remembering uh, back when we first began this journey, we were talking, we were talking about the pattern, the design of God. And as I said, that uh, during the the seven year period of of tribulation, the, the the whole period of tribulation, it's when when Satan sets himself up in the temple. That's a pattern. That's a pattern for what's being set up in our temples, in our bodies. So we want to. If we want to, if we want to defeat the enemy, if we want to be able to identify the enemy, then we must learn what are his tactics, what are his characteristics, whatever our enemies are, whether they be man or spirit, right? Um, just like in in the military, if you've been in the military, you want to you want to be able to identify what what are the tactics of the enemy, what kind of uh, uh, tanks and armament and weapons will the enemy have? What is the enemy going to look like? What are they going? What is he going to sound like? So we want to look to First, Second, and Third John there at the end of the New Testament, uh, just before Jude and Revelation. Uh, we're going to look to that to understand who the enemy is. Then we want to look at uh, Luke. Chapter 22 and 31, we're going to look at Luke chapter 10 and 16, and uh, we're going to look at John chapter 10, verses 10 through 16, explaining the purpose of the enemy to steal, kill, and destroy. John 10, 10 through 16, we're going to try to get an understanding of who these uh who, 
who are these who are the, the what's the heritage of the enemy where do they where where do the enemies come from who is this this north and this south we know that there are two nations there was judah in the south there's israel who was that remembering that jacob was given the name israel right and then there's judah all the tribes the 10 tribes that went to the south who are the edomites esau's descendants so we're going to look at malachi chapter 1 verses 1 through 4 so we will examine these uh verses uh additionally i think we'll also look at romans 11 7 through 12 so i hope that you have had a chance to read these scriptures and prepare uh i think i've mentioned them now a few times um a few times now as uh, in the lead up to this bible study um and remembering finally that the ways of god are unsearchable in other words he reveals to us that which we seek remember he said knock and the door shall be open seek and you shall find he says if you want wisdom ask ask of with ask of him ask for wisdom and he will give it to you so we are we are hoping uh to get answers because we're seeking diligently we want to pray fervently that we will be given the answers that we seek and romans eleven thirty three reminds us that god's ways are higher than our ways his thoughts are higher than our thoughts and his ways are unsearchable they're so vast so many so they they can't be numbered they can't be quantified and we in our present state can't fully understand them but if we ask him for the wisdom we will get it so we are going to continue to search and seek through these scriptures on tomorrow in our extended bible study i pray that you have an opportunity to read them and as we close tonight's preview you notice that i didn't start with a prayer that's because i want to take a special time uh, to pray here um, at the end uh, of, of this preview because so much has gone on this week throughout the world and in many nations Uh, i know that there are many people that uh tune in from uh, as far away as india and some other places and i know that you all have your own countries your own nations your own governments your own uh a lot of turmoil and things that are going on in so many parts of the world not just here in the united states but we know that we have um we've suffered some 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 bumpy roads uh, throughout the year of 2020 2020 do we have 2020 vision are we getting 2020 vision hindsight is 2020 you just have you thought about that this is 2020 2020 vision and we should be seeking to get that 2020 vision and so we want to go to the lord in prayer and ask him father god Abba, Father, Lord, we ask that you would continue to bless us tonight with your Holy Spirit. While we sleep, Lord, let the Holy Spirit impart the words and the guidance and the wisdom into all those who hear this message and all those who are listening and studying your word in spirit and in truth, seeking the truth. Father, we ask that you would reveal it to us, Lord God. Reveal to us what we need to know. Give us the our daily bread, what we need for today, what we're going to need for tomorrow in preparation of our studies and in worship 
of your Sabbath. Lord, give us what we need to understand what's going on in our worlds, in our societies, in our cities, in our neighborhoods, on our street, in our houses, in our hearts, and in our minds. Help us, Father. Make it plain, Lord God, 